Welcome to Paley Fest Fall TV Previews. I'm Amanda Salas. I'm the entertainment anchor on Fox LA's Good Day LA. And I am so delighted to be your host for this super special conversation, celebrating the Apple TV Plus series, Life by Ella. As a cancer survivor myself, this means more to me than I can express. And thanks to City, the festival's official card and official sponsor for their help making this program possible. Today, I am super thrilled to welcome the members of the series' gifted cast and creative team. Joining us are Lily Brooks O'Brien, who plays Ella. Hi. Hey. Woo. So much for having me. Hey. Yes, Arian Celestine, who plays Kai, her BFF, of course. Mm -hmm. Woohoo! Vanessa Carrasco, who plays Mena. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> and showrunners Jeff Hodsden and Tim Pollack and writer Hernan Berrigan. Thank you for being here today. Thank you. Thank, yes. you. thank you for having us. Yes, thank you so much. Welcome to everyone watching. Let's begin <laughs> our program. Life by Ella, it's not just a relatable series for so many who go through this every day. It's an important conversation that so many families all over the world have. I want each of you to talk about the joy this series brings, but also the essential moments that are serious in nature and, and talk about that delicate balance for your personal role in the series. So Hernan, let's begin with you. Yeah, and, and I think culturally we, we shy away from things like this, especially the word cancer. It's such a scary thing. We all equate it with death. Right. And I feel like it's really important that we, you know, take the time to tell the story, the full story, the joys, the sadness, and that way we can kind of dispel some of that fear. I, I would I would agree with that, personally and professionally, definitely. Tim and Jeff, I'd love to get your perspective on this, being the showrunners. I mean, I, to, to me, I think Hernan said it great. Uh, you know, I, I think to us, we sort of were looking at different stories as, as creators, and it occurred to us that, you know, we, we met some people, we had some people in our lives who had had cancer, and come out the other end and it and sort of changed them for the better. And there was actually positivity that came from something that was so traumatic, so scary, and in, uh, in many ways horrible, but there was good that came from it. And it's something that we hadn't ever really thought of before. It, it struck mm -hmm. us as different and, and unique. And so we thought like, how, how do we dramatize that? And we really set out to do that to sort of say, because obviously cancer is, has touched too many of us, but at, at the same time, uh, it could be for any traumatic experience where, you know, something that, that is scary or hard, uh, you know, you could choose to let it break you or it could, you know, uh, make the choice, I guess, to uh, take positivity from it and, and build from it. Yeah, we really wanted to show that talking up to kids, you know, not down to kids. We wanted something that the families could watch together, you know, where the kids won't be afraid to ask questions about things that they're scared about, who've gone through the experience and like Tim and even ones who haven't gone through those experiences, but they've all gone through, everyone goes through something hard. And we wanted to put a positive light on something that could be so horrible, you know, and make you feel better about it. Yes. And yeah. you have this amazing cast to help tell this story. Lily Brooks, <laughs> this is a powerful role. It's raw. It's real. It's relatable. Why did you want to do this? Um, I thought it was so important um, to really accurately represent what a lot of these kids go through. I'm really grateful. I'm a, I'm a youth ambassador for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, and I had the honor of talking with a few patients um, who I'm actually friends with from, I'm originally from Memphis, Tennessee, which is where the hospital is based. Um, and I was able to talk to a couple of my friends who were treated at St. Jude and take their experiences and really put them into my character just to accurately represent what these kids go through. I was also able to talk to Hernan and talk about his experience and he shared with me his documentary where he talked with so many cancer survivors and patients. Um, and that was really helpful to me to really accurately represent this story. And I'm so grateful and I love the way it turned out. I, I think it's amazing. Thank you for, for putting truth to this role. And thank you for all that you've done as a St. Jude ambassador, raising thousands of dollars for so many in need, such a great cause. And behind every strong cancer survivor is her BFF, Kai, holding it down and supporting the, I call it, emotional roller coaster that comes with it, right? Yes, yeah, such a deep subject. Um, I'm very glad that we're showing like the positive out of these things. You know, you have people around you that are there for you and they'll do anything for you. And though you're going through these, you know, tough times, they're feeling like just having the feeling that someone loves you and that someone's there for you is the thing that can really push you through 
like these hard times. And with Kai being her best friend, I feel like that's one of the big things that helped Ella get through her cancer. We all need a Kai in our lives. Yes, we do. <laughs> Forget ride or die. It's ride or Kai, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Vanessa, I'm you're you're a ever. <laughs> Definitely. You're experiencing this roller coaster where it's not always easy. You don't know what to say. Your character has to find that balance. Yeah, I mean, with my character, she was so scared to lose her BFF before Kai. She was so scared to lose her BFF, Ella, that she that she lost her. She wound herself up so tight in not wanting to see her essentially die. And while cancer doesn't mean the word die, I guess in a child's eyes, it's a very scary aspect. And for Jimena, she said it, she thought that she would rather just leave and not have to deal with it whatsoever and just cut all contact than, you know, watch this unfold in front of her because that is traumatic. But while it's not the best decision, you know, everyone makes mistakes in life and everyone you know, has the right to take some time to themselves mentally. But I feel like in the end, Hamina right, made the right choice by trying to rekindle her friendship. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I appreciated that character too, because again, as a cancer survivor, there is that friend that doesn't know what to say, doesn't reach out. And um, I feel like you covered all the bases here with the show. You know, representation matters. We say that a lot in the industry and you're bringing awareness to the cancer community, which I personally feel is underrepresented. So I'm really excited that we're putting the stream and mainstream here and bringing awareness to this important topic. What is one takeaway that the show actually taught you that maybe you didn't know before being a part of Life Viola? I could, anyone, do you want to start Lily Brooks? I'll go first. Um, yeah. I feel like something that I definitely took away from playing Ella and something that I hope that everyone takes away from watching Life by Ella is Ella's mindset going through life after being, after going through treatment for cancer. It, going through cancer really taught her that you can't be afraid of anything. You have to live life to the fullest and seize the day and be who you want to be, your true self. Because before cancer, Ella kind of was a, more, more a follower than she was a leader. She wanted people to like her and she was just kind of doing what she thought would make other people happy instead of doing what she thought would make herself happy. And after cancer, she realized that she can't live life trying to please other people. She just has to live life the way that she wants to and just live life to the fullest. And that's something that I personally have learned a lot from playing Ella. Um, and I'm really incredibly grateful for that because it's taught me a lot about myself as a person. And I hope that people watching the show can take take that away as well. Oh yeah, it starts out just like going head first or feet first, you know, taking the plunge <laughs> into the scary part. The pool is a metaphor for me. Yeah, that was so fun. I love filming that scene was awesome. Yes. And you're right next to her audience. So what do you what did you take away from all of this? Yeah, I feel like along with what Lily was saying, we're not promised tomorrow and we never know like how long we're gonna have. So every like time is something that's valuable and you should live every moment to the fullest. And though you may be scared sometimes to you know step out of your comfort zone and do things that are different it's good because it's like all a part of growing and just finding out new things about yourself. Like with Kai, he wasn't as much of this like daredevil outgoing kid until, you know, yeah. Ella started him along for these like crazy adventures and, you know, being someone different and having different elements to who you are. You bring out the best in each other. Exactly. Maybe you, you keep her a little more grounded and she helps you get out of your shell. You shouldn't like, I was like very like, you know, just let's do it. Let's do anything. And yeah. Kai's really back. So I feel like it's good to have that balance because if I wasn't there, she'd probably be doing like really crazy things. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Ella would definitely be the kind to like, as soon as she turns 16, go skydiving, which is like, like me. I want to go skydiving so bad. Oh Ella man, has anyone been skydiving? <laughs> Who's been skydiving on this? Let's all go. Yeah, we'll ah! do it together. <laughs> I, we have to Jeff go. and I jumped off that high dive board to help support our team. That Absolutely. was that was as close as I'll ever come to skydiving. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very traumatic for us. <laughs> After How high was that? Jump, oh, it was high. It was pretty high. It was it scary. Was high. Honestly, it was high. It was high looking up at it, but when you're looking down, it's Ooh. a whole different kind of high. Yeah, the travel to the water was much longer than you would think. Yeah. <laughs> I will say Artyan was much, much more fearless about it than I was. I was scared. I like went and practiced and Artyan was like, let's do it. <laughs> I was like, okay. 
<laughs> your, kind of, your characters are kind of opposite. In yeah. your <laughs> <laughs> I love it though. I love, it was a great way to begin this series. Vanessa, what was one takeaway you personally got from this series? I think, I think in general for everyone, no matter the situation, you know, if you have a friend in need, it's really important to truly listen to them and, you know, their concerns and their their needs and also what they hope for too, because I feel like in the first couple episodes, Jimena is a little bit mm. clueless about what Ella went through. And especially since Jimena left during that time, she didn't really know the ins and outs. And because of that, she tends to come off as a little bit insensitive. You know, she's, you know, she's playing all these games with her and, and Ella feels a little bit hurt. And I, because of that, Jimena takes some time to really sit down with Ella and listen to her. And I think that's something that everyone should do because you truly do not know what people are going through. Well said. Well said. And the creative team behind this, you know, making this, what was one takeaway, Jeff, that you got from it? You know, for me, it was uh, everything, what everyone's saying is all super important for me. I think my biggest takeaway was in doing the research on this and just with the show and everything is like what families actually go through and the friends and how strong the people who go through it, you know, trying to portray that constant positivity and get people to see what she's saying is not so easy. Because, you know, the families are still sad and they're so scared that she's going to fall back into that or their loved ones. And that strength that they have to keep pushing forward to get them to that moment to, to appreciating every day in that, same, in that same light, I think, is what really hit me. Yeah, I mean, I, I wish I could put it uh, more succinctly than everyone else has. But I mean, you know, everyone's put it so well. I think, you know, as Jeff mentioned, we just did a ton of research for this project and, uh, you know, reached out to different organizations, met people like Hernan amongst others. And I think what, what struck us is just that everyone has a multifaceted experience going through it. There's fear, there's joy, yeah. there's happiness, there's uh, sadness. And, but, but uh, you know, at the same time, it's just the human experience. And it's, it, that's what sort of makes it totally relatable. Or it struck, that struck me really is that it's no different, you know, from living your life if you don't have a diagnosis. It's, right. it's just a, a reminder of some of the things that, that those of us who aren't diagnosed lose sight of. And so that's why uh, to us, I think trying to make that point was sort of important. And uh, I think it's a universal show, even though it's a, you know, very specific. Even though cancer's at the core, it, it is a human story. Hernan, mm -hmm. I, I saw you nodding your head because cancer doesn't define someone. It's what you go to who you are. You're more than that. I mean, yeah. it's, you become supercharged in a way. I feel like it's, it's you plus cancer plus that yeah. mysterious extra that you kind of inherit from going through that experience. Yeah. Um, back when I was fresh out of treatment, like I was first told that I was cancer free, I was so ecstatic and like, I felt invincible. And I felt like that was the feeling that I was most afraid of losing as I got older, right? I wanted to hang on to that. And so I feel like I did. And, um, that's what I hope that people get out of this show, that ecstatic, like the more, I feel like the more people feel that way in this world, the better the world is. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm getting, I'm feeling so much relevance, not only in the show, but just hearing you just share your own personal perspective. So thank you for that. Thank you for bringing it on the screen and behind the scene as well. This question comes from festival sponsor City. Life by Ella has a lot to say as we discussed about facing fears and appreciating each moment. What do you hope that the biggest takeaway will be for audiences watching this series? Ooh, that's a good one. Oh, I'll start. Actually, wait, no, we can start. Okay, fine, order. Honestly, yellow. <laughs> like, <laughs> honestly, <laughs> only live once. Yellow. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but truly, you know, one thing that the show I think has taught literally everyone here, even even the people who made the show, like just being on set and, you know, working through this experience. And I think it really shows out, you know, on the screen is YOLO. And I, although it's hard because I know a lot of people go through a lot of different things every day. You have to realize that, you know, the people you're around and, you know, everything you touch, my laptop, you know, my dress, like you might not feel those things or see those people tomorrow. So you really have to, you know, go out and live every day. Like, even if you have a day at work, you know, go for a dinner later, you know, yeah. 
kiss your wife or something. I don't know. Whatever yeah. you want to <laughs> do. Your it's, dog, it's, whoever it's, you want to kiss. You yeah. might not see those people tomorrow and you really want to fill your life with just nothing but what you want to do. You got to enjoy the little things like going out and like walking your dog. And like, that's something that totally. yesterday I was like, I was like, wow, this is actually really good. And like enjoying the sunsets. Like last night there was a gorgeous sunset in LA and I just was like sitting out on my balcony. I was like, wow, this is amazing. Like you just have to enjoy the little things in life. You can't take anything for granted because you never know. Yeah. You never know what's going to happen. And that's something that Ella has taught me personally is that you have to just enjoy everything in life. You can't take anything for granted. We are pretty lucky with some great sunsets here. Oh, hundred <laughs> percent. Oh, we are lucky here in LA. Yeah. Like it was two day, it, it was two nights in a row. Like last night and the night before, I was like, wow, it was awesome. We had ugly sunsets here in New York. <laughs> oh, no. Great sunrise, maybe you guys can have the sunrise. We'll take the yeah. sunset. Yes, I can't see it though. So, <laughs> like, I can you know, one of the things that we liked about this that what Alice's character went through and, and all cancer, you know, uh, victims go through is like when they come out of this, it's like their superpower. And so it's like, that's the kind of way we thought of this. And so I think walking out of this is we realize like the perspective that we take on life, that positivity that we all can have, we can all have that superpower. Yeah. You know, we may not have capes, we not, be not, you know, you know, wield lightsabers and stuff like that, but <laughs> we all have that superpower to make us special with that. It's really hard to be that positive and, and see that light. And I think that's a lot of strength that a lot of us can really, you know, aspire to. I feel like you're judging me for the lightsaber and cape that I walk around with. <laughs> I mean, he does. There's no judgment here. <laughs> okay. no Arya, did you want to say something about that? Yeah, I feel like I hope that people can just realize and think how grateful like we all are, you know, to have people around us that love us and just mm. to be here today. Like we just all need to take a second, like, wow, I'm alive. And I have so many things I can do to, you know, make my life so much better because everyone lives a life where that doesn't mean it's like it was to the fullest they could they could have had or like the best life they could have had you know just being happy and being in every moment is great it's you need to be grateful for it yeah and Ernan I wanted to tell you that it's important and this show really shows it that it doesn't stop after treatment you still carry carry those feelings of PTSD and everything even when you're at school mm -hmm. whether it's a paper towel that triggers you or Absolutely. or any emotional journey so it's important to know that and for others to know it doesn't just stop when yeah. treatment stops. And you can't just leave it behind. It becomes, right. again, it becomes something that colors all your days, but it can yeah. color it in a, in a dark way or in a light way too. It's yeah. something that you get to choose. You get to choose that. Moving yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Something that, something that Ella goes through, like going back to school, like everyone kind of sees her coming back to school and they're like, Oh, look, it's Ella. Like she's, she's back after her treatment. And, Ella, going back to school, she just kind of wanted everything to be normal. She was like, I, she didn't want anyone to point out that she's back or anything like that. But yeah. you kind of can't control that. You have to let it. Right. You have to just kind of let it be a part of you, but in a good way, like in a positive way. Let it change you in the best way possible. Mm -hmm. You have to define that normal, you know? Yeah. What is that normal in any way, especially after something mm -hmm. like that? Yeah. Right. What is that normal? I love that you mentioned back to school because that is a great segue to my next <laughs> fun little question. BTS doesn't just stand for behind the scenes, which is what we're doing, talking about life, Viola. It also stands for back to school. So September, a lot of the kids are going back to school when the series streams on Apple TV+. Plus. I just want to know the one thing each of you looked forward to going back to school, whether it was elementary school and Trapper Keepers, whether it was high school and driving yourself. I just want to know the one thing you can remember. Okay, Lily Brooks, you got one. Let me hear I, it. Okay, so I have two. The first one is school supplies. My favorite thing in the world is shopping for school supplies. <laughs> I know it's so stupid, but I like, oh I get so excited over like getting my pens and like my binder. <laughs> I get weirdly excited about all that stuff. Team Trapper um, Keeper, let's go. Oh, no. nailed it. I was thinking Folders, Trapper Keeper is on. Lily, yeah, Lisa <laughs> Frank, all of it. Yes. I get so excited. Like I, I have a planner, a binder, like I get my fancy pens. Oh, my my but this year specifically, I don't, I don't go to school in person. Um, so I can't like drive myself to school, but I just got my license. So hey! excited. Hey! And, um, Congratulations. Um, um, so like I can like drive my I can go pick my brother and sister up from school, um, which is great, <laughs> and like take them to school. So Sorry. that has been very exciting for me. Yeah, I love that. It's a full circle moment for you. So carpool. 
Carpool. <laughs> I am carpool. <laughs> Pam, what was your favorite back to school memory? Uh, so many. I mean, obviously my friends, because uh, back then I had some. Uh, but I, I also <laughs> liked that first day feeling where you had that little, for me, I don't know, maybe this is still a thing or maybe not. I'm old. There was that plastic uh, little pouch at the, the, the first thing <laughs> in your trapper keeper or your binder. And you would have like your erasers and your pencils. And I liked that first day when it was all neat and uh, tidy in there. And then the second day you'd be like, I, uh, I don't have any pencils in there. There's nothing in there. And you, you like all of somehow lo have lost everything. So uh, I like just the, that, tr that quick transition from, from order to chaos. Yes, order to chaos, the balance of it all. Vanessa, how about you? Back to school memory, first thing that pops in your mind? I think my biggest regret in all of my school years is over buying school supplies. I used to be like so infatuated with that. I would buy literally everything in Target and then I would just have no space and I would never use it. And they would just collect in this little top shelf of my bookshelf where all of my, it's like the graveyard over there. It's crazy. Oh, the graveyard. Now I just, I just have like a little, little notebook and a pencil and a singular highlighter because they told us to, but I'm really excited to go back to school. Um, and see my friends and also my school is six blocks away from where I live. So I get to walk there every morning. Great. So, but it's, mo it's mostly my friends. I miss them. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. Friends are always great to see them back again at school. Anyone else have any back to school memories? I guess I'll go. Um, yeah. It kind of like starts before school. Um, we have like our football summer camp. So that's where I get to like see my friends coming out of, you know, summer break too. And we actually have our first game today, which is, a part of school, I guess. And I'm excited. I don't get to play because I was recently on vacation and I did miss practice for a week. <laughs> but I will be playing next week and I'm very excited about that. So I need to come That's watch so you play. Exciting. Yeah. yeah. Jeff or Hernan, did, it, did either of you uh, join sports or have any extracurricular activities? Um, for, for me, I, I mean, I played sports and stuff, but for me, I, I didn't have the, fortunately, I didn't have Ella's ability uh, going to school and being positive. I had nothing but fear and anxiety, and I was just scared of not being able to memorize my locker combinations and all that kind of stuff like that. But uh, <laughs> other than that, I love obviously being around my friends and stuff like that. And I played, uh, you know, for me in my senior, I got to be the quarterback. So that was kind of cool, but I was like the most least popular quarterback in our school in time. So that, that's my positive memory. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you remember it, so there you go. There exactly, you go. I remember it, yeah. so it's something, right? Yeah. And Arnon, for you? Oh, God. I mean, like mo a, a lot of my high school, I don't remember because it was all chemo brain for me, but um, <laughs> I do remember parking on the same block as all my friends because we all had Volkswagens. It was probably the most fun thing about my senior yeah, year. That's team B-Dub. <laughs> yeah. So cool. Chemo brain is a real thing, by the way. Thank you for saying that. Yeah. <laughs> September is not only back to school, it's also Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. So I'm wearing my goal to represent. And um, I just want to finish off this conversation by, by, by filling in a blank. Life by Ella, what did it mean to you being a part of it? In one word, if you could just sum up your journey with Life by Ella, what is Life by Ella for you individually? Oh, well, that's, there's so many words I could use to describe it. What's the first one that comes to mind? I, I would say power, the power to, to change the, your, perspective, your, your perspective on anything. You can be positive, you can be negative, but Ella chooses to be positive in any situation, no matter, no matter what it is, no matter if it's with her friends or with her family. She always has the power to choose to be positive. And I love that about Ella. She's taught me so much about myself and about life and I'm incredibly grateful for that. And I really hope that the people who watch the, the show learn that that same thing that I learned from Ella. Um, that would be amazing. <laughs> for me, I'll say it was special because this experience mm -hmm. of making the show, which uh, has just been so special from the start, you know, we when reaching out, we just met so many incredible people, including Hernan, including Vanessa, Artyan, and Lily Brooks. And to be on set and to see, like, mm -hmm. Jeff and I worked together for years and we worked on many great shows, but to see, like, and I think the subject matter and the material and, like, the teamwork that went into creating the show, just the, uh, I've never seen crew members come up and, and with tears in their eyes and say, like, this is, this, this seems so touching, you know, like, guys who carry lights 
<laughs> you know, coming up with tears in their eyes. Like I've never, I've never experienced that before. Uh, usually it's more out of my way. And so it, it was just so special and getting to meet people that I'm going to be friends with for life because there was just such a strong bond that was created. So uh, it's just, a, it's a special memory for me. That's a testament to all of you. I think for me, it's probably change because everyone on the show, like every character definitely has changed like throughout the course of the episodes in a positive way. And I think, especially for, for Ella, her character changes, changes mindset. My character changes, you know, her point of view and Artyon, Artyon's character changes, you know, his fears, you know, obviously he still has fears, but he (laughs) learns to let loose a little bit more and just to enjoy So I think for everyone, not, not only, not only the characters, I honestly think everyone on set, like, like Tim was saying, you know, I'm walking out of doing a really sad scene on a bed with Lily and I and walk past <laughs> this light guy's like, I'm like, wow. Shout out to your yeah. lighting department. Your lighting yeah. department's really tapped in. <laughs> yeah, me and Vanessa had a scene in one of the episodes where we were, we were, it was, an, it was a more emotional scene and in her bedroom and we were just like having this deep conversation and I remember like walking out we were done and I was like taking a deep breath and everyone like Tim our scripty um like everyone was just so emotional I was like dang <laughs> that, was, that was a lot <laughs> no but it was really great to see everyone like really connecting to the story and it, it was it was really cool but there were also a lot of times where it was not as emotional. It was just so fun laughing. and funny and like, right. and laughing together. So I just, but I think everyone just seemed to, I think hopefully this comes across on screen, but the craftsmanship, because it seemed like everyone just was putting, giving it, really giving it their all. It didn't feel like a day at work ever Percent. with anyone there. And it was a, uh, you know, it was, it was a special experience. I feel like I, I laughed so much when I had scenes with like Aiden, he just <laughs> makes me laugh. He makes me laugh. I like, we, we're always talking about football and I know absolutely nothing about football. And, but it's the only thing he talks about, he just always brings up football no matter what. And I'm like, I know nothing, but I'm just going to pretend that I do. <laughs> so invested into like everything he does with football, like his little edits. On TikTok. <laughs> edits on TikTok. It's cute It's cute. cute. Though. It's cute. It's we can't so bash him for that. It's so cute. He makes literally it tackled it all. With the <laughs> exactly. Football <laughs> included. Any last words? Um, I would say like my word for me, I would say is like courage because just like being brave and doing things you're not used to doing. Um, Ella, she, she's never going to live her life the same after this. She's always going to think different, act different, and just be a different person overall. And the people around her, they're also, they've, they've changed like Vanessa has said, and change is good. You know, it's not always a bad thing. It um, teaches you new things and just branches you out to become a better person. It sounds like everyone lived happily Ella after for making <laughs> this. So thank you so much for joining me today and discussing this amazing project and important series. All 10 episodes of Life by Ella are now streaming on Apple TV+. And I want to thank you again for joining this special Haley Fest Fall TV preview conversation with the wonderful cast and creative team of Life by Ella. And thanks once again to City for their support. You can enjoy more of these programs by clicking the subscribe button below. Thank you. Stay healthy and safe. Thanks, Life by Ella team. Bye. Thank you, Amanda. Bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye.